This is the recording of Web Seminar 4 from the Nature Plus series Building Materials of the Future – How Classics and Newcomers are Making Construction More Sustainable. The topic is Bamboo – A Building Material Suitable for the Masses? Enjoy! So, I would like to welcome you all to our fourth seminar in our uh, web seminar series, Building Materials of the Future. Um, this is the, the fourth um, seminar. The, the first three were about wood, about bricks, about clay. So all quite classical building materials. And I'm quite excited about today's topic, bamboo, um, which might also be pop, um, like traditional in some areas, but maybe not in, in Europe or maybe not that much as the others or maybe you're yeah you you can be um surprised can be surprised about the examples that we will see today and uh, first of all and um, just some technical informations i will um start sharing uh, my presentation in a second so i just need to go to the beginning here Okay, hands off. I need to get control about the presentation. So I hope this is working now. Great. Okay, so uh, most of you have been here already. So this is old news for you. Nonetheless, I want to say that this um, seminar is being recorded. And you will also get access to the recordings um, to this and also to the others of the series um, after the whole series is completed. And um, if you still need a certificate about um, participating in this web seminar series, you can ask um, Ilka Foss for that. Uh, just email at foss at natureplus.org and then you will get this. Um, some technical notes on Zoom as well. I think you're all familiar with the tool um, like in this pandemic this, uh, times right now, but still I want to mention that uh, please mute yourself, especially during the presentations and also switch off your video so we have enough uh, data processing for the speakers. Um, you can raise your hand, especially during our discussion at the end, um, if you want to ask a question. You can also use the chat during the whole um, seminar and also during the presentations to ask your questions, to comment something. Um, here we want to um, make you aware that you please address the speaker that you um, want, yeah, the question is, so we can um, address them um, in the discussion and that they know that they are the ones addressed. Um, here it's a bit, yeah, more specific again. So the, this is where you find uh, the function to raise your hand. And if you use a chat, um, please see that you address um, everyone so we can also see your question and um, address it in the, in the discussion at the end. So, right. Um, now I've started like right off into the technical notes without introducing myself and I want to do that now. So I'm Marlene Konrad and I will moderate today's seminar as I did the last time. So some of you might know me already. I am a consultant for um, communication, collaboration and innovation. So feel free to contact me if you have any queries like that. And I also want to give it up to uh, Tilman Kamulisch from Nature Plus to introduce himself as well. Tillman. Yes, thank you very much, Marlene. Um, it's good to have you here on board, of course. Um, thank you for doing the moderation. And good morning to everyone as, uh, and welcome back. Good to see you again. Most of you, I guess, um, already have joined the other web seminars about the rather, let's say, classical building materials, clay, timber and bricks. And now I really share the, um, I'm as excited as Marlene to hear about bamboo. And we have really ded dedicated 
um, experts here today. So I'm really keen to learn more. Uh, here in Germany, actually, the summer has started. And so today I choose uh, iced coffee. And so I also hope you are very good equipped for this um, web seminar today. Um, yeah, I maybe Marlene, you can go to the next slide. And yeah, just very shortly for all that uh, um, might be new today. Um, so um, just to give you a short introduction that you know who is hosting this webinar today, it's uh, Nature Plus. Um, I'm actually the director of this um, nonprofit environmental association and we are a member-based network and mission driven and really work for the transformation of the building sector towards more sustainability. And we think that materials matters. And so, yeah, let's see what Bamboo can contribute to that. Um, next slide, please, Marlene. Thank you very much. Yeah, and it's, as you might know, of course, it's always about um, gathering information, gathering ideas and um, yeah, together to um, really to um, implement projects, to realize projects. And so that's, this is also our idea, the, the idea of the um, Nature Plus Network Association. So um, feel free if you like what we are doing, become a member here. And um, I think we really can also support you to realize your ideas and projects. Also within our network, you also can really, if you have a no lot of knowledge, for example, about building materials, you can bring in this knowledge and um, together we process this knowledge into very high standards for building materials. And Nature Plus also has a eco label, the Nature Plus eco label. And there we, we use these standards to, yeah, really to make the building sector within the materials um, more sustainable. Okay, that's all of uh, Nature Plus at the moment. And um, next slide, please, Marlene, thank you very much. Um, we run and host this web seminar series together with um, our partner, Architects for Future. And um, yeah, it's very good to have them with us. Uh, it's a network network of rather young professionals that are really de dedicated to sustainability. And so um, we will, and we are very happy, we will give them also the, the chance to um, comment on what we are discussing today. And later on in the discussion round, they will also join. And um, yeah, I think they're already on board here today um later on we give them the chance to introduce very shortly in the discussion round and i also want to give a as always really a big thanks to our sponsors Ligner Trend, Wienerberger, Österreich, Austria and uh, Lehm Orange and also to our theme sponsors um, BVSA and Kuba that you're gonna get to know next session and Chewood. And if you want to learn more about them, see their building material solutions or what they are doing, um, check our forum, our sponsor forum and they get more information, direct contacts also. And yeah, Marlene, now we are ready to start. Yeah, thank you very much. So now, um, as always, we want to give you a, qu a quick introduction into today's topic, bamboo. And we thought of doing this by asking you, oh, well, I'm ahead of my own schedule, so sorry. Um, <laughs> no, before I do that, I want to give you an overview about the speakers we have today and the presentations. Um, you probably had a look at that already. Nonetheless, I wanted to show it to you. So you heard of uh, Tillman and me already, and also of our cooperation partners from Architects for Future. So here you have an, an image for that as well. And um, as Tillman already said, you can address them as well in the chat and also in our later discussion. So feel free to ask questions um, about Architects for Future and about how that all involves um, bamboo. Then we start off, our first speaker is um, Mr. Hebel from the Karlsruhe Institute of um, Technology, and he will give us an introduction about um, bamboo, about the, the techn technology um, of building with bamboo. And um, then after that, we have um, Markus Heinsdorf. He will show us a concrete example with the German Chinese house at the Expo Shanghai. And after that, um, you have a 10 minute break to refresh, um, get new drinks and snacks and um, all of that. So 
uh, you will have time for that after the second presentation. Then we go into two other concrete examples um, from Andrea Klinger. She will uh, um, talk about the Torre di Bambu and also a school in Pakistan uh, that are made with bamboo. And after that uh, presentation, we will have Nina Pavliki talking uh, also about um, like uh, examples from the from the praxis um, in two examples, one from Colombia and one from Bangladesh. So it's getting very international today. And at the very end, we will have Stefano Martinelli from Bamboo Zetu, and he will also show us concrete examples of what you can do with bamboo. And as I already said, we will have all the questions at our discussion at the end. So feel free to ask the questions throughout the seminar in the chat, and then we will address them later on. So now this is what I have spoiled already. So we ask you to um, follow the link in the chat that you will get there, or you can also use your mobile device and scan the QR code that you see now. Because what we are interested in is where did you last encounter a building that is made of bamboo? And I will also ask uh, the speakers to participate as well, because as I said, the examples will be quite international today. Um, so you will be able to choose one example um, of a worldwide um, on the worldwide map of where you have last seen and um, yeah experienced a building made of bamboo. And I will quickly stop now to show you the results as they fly in. And one moment. There are already some results incoming. So you should see that now, I hope there should be a map with, um, yeah, with, we have six participants who have already found the way. So maybe some more to come. And as we can already see, it's quite um, spread all over the world. So ah, there are more examples coming in. A lot in the Asian region, some in the Southeast Asia and East Asia so far. One is like, should be an, an island or something. Like, I don't know exactly what, what, what island that, that is here. Uh, there, we have two examples now in South America. One in, I think that could be Germany. And uh, yeah, this, this one could maybe be, um, yeah, here China maybe. So we have an example from Shanghai later on as well. Um, 10 of you have already found it. So I give you a little more time to, to join us here. But I think as we can already see, it's, um, yeah, bamboo is quite an interesting building material also from this, um, respect and there are not a lot of pins here in Europe so maybe this is something that we can work on in the future to have it uh, um, more spread than it already is okay so thank you very much for participating here um, okay as I already said our first presentation um, will be by Mr. Hebel. And um, before he starts and shares his presentation, I want to quickly introduce you to him, who he is. Um, Dick Hebel is Professor of Sustainable Building at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, where he is also Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Architecture. He's the author of numerous publications, including on sustainable building materials and design. As an architect, he focuses on resource efficient construction and circular materials. His work has been shown in numerous exhibitions worldwide and has received a number of awards. As a principal investigator at the Future Cities Laboratory of the Singapore ETH Center, Dirk Hebel is researching ways to globally drive ecological transformation. So I hope I have said that all right. And now I will give it up to Mr. Hebel and he will go into the first presentation.
Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting. And I think, yeah, there's a lot possible. And I'm excited that we now will see a lot of um, concrete examples where this is put into practice. And the first speaker, uh, before I introduce the first speaker, I want to make you aware again, uh, as you already do, um, address the speaker you want to ask your question to in the chat and post your question there. We will collect it all and address it at our discussion at the end. Um, so feel free to do that during the presentations as you already uh, do. Okay, so the next speaker will be Markus Heinsdorf and I will quickly introduce you. He is an artist, he trained as a sculptor and he works at the intersection of art and architecture. He has served as a visiting professor at several Chinese faculties and he co-founded an experimental space laboratory at the Technical University in Munich. His projects, installations and exhibitions have taken place all over the world. And Markus Heinzhoff has received several awards, including the Bundesverdienstkreuz. Both in India and China, he designed pavilions for the presentation of Germany, among others um, at the Expo Shanghai 2010. And that is also the topic of today's presentation. So, um, Mr. Heinzdorf, you are next in line and I hope um, you found your way here. I see that your presentation is already incoming. So we would also like to see and hear you. You can see me, you can hear yes. me. Yeah. That's great. We see and hear you. You okay. might need to start the sharing again when you've opened the full screen mode. I already open. I do it again. Yes. Now it's working perfectly. Okay. It, it works. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation to uh, talk about my work. I'm since 22 uh, extremely fascinated. Uh, I think uh, some years uh, ago I started with my researches uh, about bamboo. In my work of artists, um, we are always searching about new materials and I start a bit to uh, take my focus on architecture. So I, I, I mixed up my work and, and the idea of how we can we do sustainably works and how we can we um, create um, installations with uh, new materials. And bamboo at this time, um, before 2000, it was very raw. Um, in Holland, uh, a university starts a huge research. And Mr. Janssen, Professor Janssen, he was one of the, the first. And also in, in Germany, we had uh, um, um, Miss, Mr. Lise, um, a professor who does worldwide researches. And so I, I start um, in, in Bali with my first uh, uh, idea how we can we use bamboo for huge structures and my concept was build a build a um, airship um, with the idea behind use the fantastic concept from Buckminster Fuller so the bee bee house the the honeycomb uh, concept of building domes was the yeah the first concept of my building. And you see here, we, uh, I do um, without any knowledge at this time, 2002, a uh, huge 30 meter long uh, construction. Um, it, it was um, visible, visible there about um, a half a year or more than six months. And we do an artificial rice field with the idea um, about a mirror from the uh, sky and sky place was also the name of this um, project and um, cars parking on the street day by night and walking in you couldn't see anymore as yourself in the sky and my idea uh, there was um, can we do can we use so it, or I start to think about can we use bamboo as a, a high-tech material or a, a material for the Future. My first researches there, or my first uh, works, uh, was with the calm of bamboo, the, the natural tube. And I asked the uh, uh, Balinese um, workers who masters in the traditional works, um, I asked them 
um, can can be can be used absolutely strictly bamboo. And this was a little bit of conflict. And the bamboo, in the natural way, is not mostly um, how you say um, straight on like a steel can. But my concept was. Um, to bring a little bit a new concept in the idea of learning from the traditional material, learning from the traditional building systems, and in the same way can be used bamboo as also as a yeah, modern building material or a modern material for built um, houses or make architecture, also make art. And here you see the um, more, for me, very interesting uh, concept. Um, um, Professor Hebel, before he talked and mentioned about the uh, treatment uh, system, a lot uh, worldwide, a lot of different uh, treatment systems uh, are available, but many are not really sustainable. And also, it's always, uh, uh, how you say, a, a, a little bit of problem how we use the chemical uh, for the treatments in the way to make it environmental friendly. And um, in, especially in China, where I built uh, a lot of my um, pavilions, they're uh, the most, um, how you say, um, modern way to produce laminated bamboo and made from bamboo buttons, bamboo sticks, cut with bamboo columns and many sticks and um, steam then. And uh, the, the idea behind this uh, today, you can um, work with laminated bamboos and uh, like organic materials or with less chemical, with a minimal chemical um, power in the in the treatments um also uh, chemical free um and so for my idea was uh beginning to mix up the laminated boards stick boards uh plates like wood and in the same way mix it up with the natural bamboo cones and here you see one of my problems in china for the for a german presentation i do the i do the um i use the was like um, a, a main construction and I'm weaving textile uh, in the in the board systems and the stabilization I made this, uh, how you say, I made them this um, tri system. I use steel connection, steel knots for um, and clumps for make huge construction um, and use this extremely lightweight system. And that works very well. And we are in an earthquake area uh, and had a huge, huge uh, um, earthquake at this time in China. And the pavilion is moving uh, around uh, one meter. Um, they are shaking. And it was no one building collapsing. So we know it from the traditional buildings that there are enormous flexibility. And you see, I use also a simple system also from my art works with Cardan technical um, that every knot is also extremely flexible and uh, the building can, you can say they are definitely earthquake stubble. Uh, what we see here is also my idea can be used uh, natural bamboo in a modern way, running from the tradition uh, and, and in the same time can be designed also city squares, can be designed parks uh, with Bamboo buildings can be built uh, today, I think, uh, 20 years later. It's absolutely uh, uh, up to date to say, yes, we can do also uh, more than one floor, maybe three, four flooring today. These uh, buildings are maybe skyscrapers uh, possibility. So I think definitely we can use it as a building material for not only for the future, also for today. And uh, it's interesting how yeah, how um, how different possibilities are there. Um, um, you can work with systems about um, many layers, or so like it do it here, like the Mongolian yurt. Um, it's without nails, without screws. It's only connect together and um, covered with membranes. And here we see a lot. One of my 
Pavilion Square in um, Shanghai, not in China, in Guangzhou in China. And uh, I work with different membrane systems to come up with this idea, can we do it in a very modern way? Here you see a lot of people visit this also. And my uh, master work was the Expo 2010 in Shanghai. I do a two flooring, uh, uh, house um, with 300 square meters and I, we had a hurricane at this time also, it was stable for this and we do a lot of um, research um, um, about the idea how we can be use the bamboo in a combination of laminated material in a combination of natural and how we can reuse them um, with furniture in combination. Here you see my um, first uh, floor with uh, uh, the uh, mixing up with steel to my idea was not only use the bamboo, um, but also with steel and parts like the roof also for the for the idea of uh, um, give them um, the, the concept of like flying. And here we have the laminated beams, you see them here in the, in the, in the top or the, uh, in the bottom, um, extremely uh, thick um, um, beams from, made from hundreds and thousands of sticks we glued together and we make the fireproofing also there and it works, works very well. Here also the idea, um, mix it with steel, but always um, be nearly the concept of, the, of traditional bamboo with the idea of weaving. Yeah, here is the start. Also here you see the elements, um, how we build them up and um, here, the uh, um, interesting uh, um, opposite to the lightweight, here we use in the, let's say, 40, 50 centimeters on the top and on the bottom uh, concrete in a special system with the support of the Technical University of Darmstadt. Um, and there um, I work with um, Professor Garecht uh, to, um, and his team um, um, on the idea how we can we make an amazing stabile uh, knot system. Um, I talked before we are in the hurricane, we had a hurricane and we are in the hurricane time there um, to bring amazing loads on the knots. Uh, so um, I think uh, there was 500 kilo on each beam on the knot was not no problem also for the tension and there was a special system from the university to um, to prepare the knots with um, sand with a prepare with a preparing before with a sand like a sandpaper effect here you see uh, the knot um, system a lot of beams can be connected in one in one point and it was amazing how um, stubble was the whole construction here the first floor we designed all the furniture and um, multifunction furniture there was no storage so um, it was my idea check out what is possible to do with bamboo also in the idea of design in the idea of um, re, uh, recycling and the idea of um, how we can be use it with uh, new new forms, also bamboo sanitary tea kitchen and so on in the floor. And we do a huge research about the uh, um, statics. About the here you see again this this uh, what I talk about the test. Um, to bring this amazing load in the uh, knot system. And uh, one concept from my side was to work with the um, screwing system. So natural beams are working and I can um, move with some simple uh, concept with screws. I can move the beams uh, up and down. And so um, I can correct it, um, the building um, um, in, a, in a modern way, if you, um, you can say. All my concepts, techniques, uh, knowledge, researches, I show in exhibitions um, in different countries. And it's always a fun to talk, uh, make workshops, talk with 
um, students also, especially in the Asian or in the um, South American um, areas. Um, and uh, we try to get forward to find new designs, new forms, new techniques to go on to make bamboo definitely to a material for the future. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very, very much for the presentation. We've got a lot of very pretty images and very nice examples here. And yeah, before we go into our next presentation, you will have the chance to have a 10 minute break and um, refresh, fill up your water supplies and um, whatever you need for the rest of our today's seminar, which will be roughly um, until one o'clock. And um, so we will have 10 minute break now and we will come back together um at 11 we are very good in time um yeah so we should also be in time with our whole seminar today so thank you so far and see you back here in 10 minutes time so welcome back i hope you've all found your way back to your screens and to your computers um, because now we go into our next presentation and this will be Andrea Klinge and I hope she's here as well. And before I uh, give, give it up to um, our Klinge, I will introduce her very briefly to you. She is an architect and specialist for sustainable building. She has been working um, for ZAS Architekten Ingenieure since 2013. And there she established the research department and in implemented several European Union research projects. She focuses on circular construction and natural building materials. Being a trained carpenter, Andrea Klinger also likes to work practically with clay, bamboo and wood in international projects with students and colleagues, as we will see in a minute. So I see you're already here and I will give you the presentation rights. Yes, that's coming in. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much um, for the nice introduction. I'm, I'm happy to be here today and uh, to present um, two of our projects um, that we established uh, in the field of um, working with bamboo. One is located actually in Europe and the other one is uh, a school in um, Pakistan. Um, Dear Cable showed already very nicely um, um, accessibility to the materials. Um, so uh, mainly it's the region um, in, in the global south where we have um, the, um, the respective climate. But uh, we identified also um, a source, and then I'm very happy that Stefano Martinelli is um, part of the, um, the series today here, um, because they harvest um, a bamboo forest in, in Italy. And um, this is obviously also important for us when we construct in, in Europe uh, with bamboo, um, that we um, obtain the resource um, as close as possible, because um, uh, we want to minimize um, CO2 emissions related um, to transport. Dirk uh, talked uh, uh, already about um, the material properties. I just repeat um, a few things um, that are important for us. Um, it's um, the fastest, uh, fastest growing plant worldwide. That's why we think it's, it's very, very interesting when it comes to construction. Um, as we heard, uh, we're running out of uh, resources. We are running out of construction materials. So we need to think in a different way. And if you have a material um, that grows quickly, um, there's certain species that grow uh, a meter a day um, that uh, becomes obviously for future research um, very, very interesting. Cultivation is necessary. We also try to work with uncultivated bamboo, which was um, not successful. So this is something we need to look uh, into. And um, uh, we can um, uh, harvest um, bamboo um, after three years. Um, I think uh, Stefano will talk about this um, as well a little bit. So um, again, this is something that's very interesting. The other thing is um, it has um, a very uh, low dead weight. I'm going to show you in the project of um, Pakistan why this is important. And uh, 
despite um, the light um, uh, dead weight, it's able to carry um, high loads for tensile bending and compression strengths. As with every natural building material, you need to think about the construction and you need to, to work in line with the material and to protect it. Otherwise, you, um, you're faced with a relatively uh, short lifespan. What is important for us, and I think this is um, slightly different, uh, a slightly different approach, we try to work uh, mainly with hand tools. Um, that has to do um, when, when we work abroad, um, we're often involved in international uh, development aid projects, and we really try to limit the technology that we import um, from Germany into other countries. So um, this is showing the, the tools um, that we used for the construction of um, different um, schools um, in Pakistan, in, in Bangladesh, and um, also in, in Africa. And um, that's why we, we are so in favor of the material because um, you can um, train people quickly, you can bring them into, into the construction sector, and you um, uh, can transfer the knowledge um, in a relatively easy way. Treatment, as we heard, is, uh, is important. Uh, we also refer to, um, to salt treatments. Um, there are different ways of implementation. Um, this is also a topic, I think, that needs to be researched um, uh, further on. Um, um, cutting in, in moon phases is, is also an approach. Um, I believe it's not uh, strong enough for uh, all beetle infestation. But again, if we could reduce um, the, uh, the implementation of um, uh, borax, for instance, I think this is also an important topic um, for the future. So the first project um, I'm going to show here is the um, Torre di Bamboo, and also from the, from the name you um, get a glimpse that we were invited by um, Bamboo Sato, um, Stefano Martinelli and his team uh, were asked to construct um, a tower at the um, Green Utopia in uh, Milan. And um, as structural calculations were required, they approached us because they knew that we would um, uh, carry out such, um, such calculations with our engineering team. We then conducted um, uh, different workshops in order to come up with a design idea, tested different um, possibilities, how to construct a tower material and resource efficient uh, with a certain height. The aim was really to, to go a, a little higher, eight meters. And we came up um, quite quickly with, uh, uh, with the concept of a hyperbolic um, tower inspired by the Russian engineer uh, Shukhov, who did different um, tower constructions to carry high loads, not in bamboo though, but we transferred um, such concepts um, to our bamboo tower. So the, um, the final height was um, uh, roughly um, eight meters. We have an outer ring and an inner ring um, that is going towards um, different um, directions in order to, to build um, knots that we could um, use for the sacral, uh, structural integrity of um, and stiffening of the tower. And um, uh, what was uh, important or what is important to, to say is that although it looks like we have uh, bended poles, um, uh, all the canes um, are, um, are straight and um, is uh, a simple line. Um, due to the fact that uh, bamboo from Europe doesn't grow as high as um, re uh, bamboo from other resources, we had to construct um, joints um, in order to achieve the, the height of um, eight meter butt joints, uh, reversible connections because it was um, a, a temporary structure and the idea was to be able to dismantle it and to, to show it uh, in a different occasion um, again. So we tested different um, possibilities and uh, came uh, or ended with the idea to uh, use um, threaded rods. Um, so the, the um, concept is to cut off the, the bamboo canes um, between two and, and four centimeters, um, depending if, if you have the, the lower part or the, uh, the upper part of, the, um, of the, the, the final cane itself in order to uh, be able to hide um, uh, the connection here. You need then to, um, uh, to drill a hole into um, the, the knot in order to integrate um, the bamboo, uh, the, sorry, the, the metal rod. And as we needed to fix it uh, within the, the bamboo cane, again, we, we drilled holes in and could implement um, a screed that you can see here in order to fix the entire um, connection. 
for the um, for the base, uh, the foundation, and also the ring we uh, uh, were referring to um, plug uh, connections. Uh, we constructed um, a drilling template. Uh, in order to be able to prefabricate um, everything in, in Berlin and then to, to ship it over um, to Milan due to um, the um, design concept. We had different angles um, of the, the final um, canes going into the, uh, the lower part and also into the upper part because the, the lower ring is um, slightly uh, smaller than, uh, than the upper ring. We had then the opportunity to work again with um, or to collaborate with friends um, uh, who had um, a workshop, a carpentry in, in Berlin, and they um, offered us um, the space so that we could um, pre-construct um, the upper ring that you can see here um, and also the foundation uh, works. So we were um, lucky that um, we were sponsored um, by uh, Muffle. We, we just wrote them an email uh, telling them about our idea and it was pretty clear that we needed different um, machinery in order to, um, to drill really all these, um, these holes. And they supported us uh, with their machinery for free and they were pretty in favor of the, um, of the entire construction. So what you can see here is um, the base. Um, it's uh, constructed from um, screen printing plates that are resistant to, to water. And within the base, um, we um, fixed um, solid uh, wooden members um, where we could uh, integrate um, the final poles. Um, in order to um, protect the tower against um, uplifting, we um, implemented then sandbags um, to bring in um, the necessary load. And one um, important detail um, for the, um, the bottom connection is that uh, you need to make sure that the, the um, rainwater can run off. Uh, so again, there's uh, another hole um, drilled into the, um, into the solid member. We tested different uh, connections um, for uh, for the uh, nodes uh, with uh, with hemp rope, again uh, working together with uh, one of our friends Emmanuel Hieringer, who is a scout and who has a lot of experience um, in in these knots, uh, because we we tried really to um, to limit um, the use um, of metal for the. Um, for the length connection, it wasn't possible. We haven't found a solution, but um, for all other um, connections, we really try to, uh, to minimize um, uh, the, the use of metal. Um, this is then the installation um, on site in uh, Milan. Uh, we, because we, we didn't bring in a, um, a scaffolding, we were then uh, given a scaffolding by the organizer of the entire trade fair. Uh, we constructed our own bamboo scaffolding. I think um, the creator at a certain point, he was a bit nervous and he asked us to go across the road. There was another construction site and he said, at least borrow some helmets to look a little bit more professional. Um, but yeah, it all worked out. So we, um, uh, once we finished the, um, the work on the foundation, uh, we could um, install um, the upper ring that came in uh, uh, four parts due to um, uh, the size of the ring. Um, this was um, fixed then um, uh, uh, on, on site uh, with, uh, with bolted connections again. And then once um, the ring was established, uh, we could uh, implement, integrate um, the single canes. At the beginning, we thought that we could bring them in as, as um, pre-assembled um, already, but um, due, to the, due to the weight and, and the cantilever of the, the final cane, um, we um, uh, fixed it in a way that we, we brought in uh, both parts and pieces, and there was always one person in the middle uh, connecting the, um, the bamboo canes then uh, uh, on, um, on the tower itself. Um, the installation time was less than um, 72 hours, also uh, a little longer because we were waiting for the material. I think if you, if you would do it uh, all in one go, it could be probably all installed in, in a day uh, and a half. De-installation is then even quicker. This has been done uh, within, when, uh, within a day. Um, on site, we were then implementing um, uh, the, the nodes uh, with the hemp rope. Uh, it was 
pretty hard work because you do it all by hand. Uh, we were using bending st uh, bamboo sticks in order to to um, to bend really and to to tighten uh, the knots, but um, it, it is really hard work for your for your skin. And um, at the end of the day, um, we were able to. Um, to reduce really the number of knots um, that we envisioned um, beforehand, because on site we could test the, the structural integrity of the tower and uh, our engineer on site uh, relaxed us a little bit. This is then um, the final um, uh, image of uh, the tower in Milan. The idea was actually to install also a staircase and um, a viewing platform on top due to time constraints, um, because the design um, happened really in, in, in four weeks and uh, we weren't able to, to implement this, unfortunately. And there was also a question of um, access then on site. If you have um, people climbing up the stairs, um, there is obviously a safety regime that we couldn't install. Nevertheless, it's always uh, possible to, to climb a tower that we did um, at the beginning um, that was obviously not done um, uh, when it was uh, the exhibition open to, um, to the audience, uh, but it's, uh, it was quite a nice view that we could enjoy from, from the upper part. We were then given another opportunity again together with, with Bambusetto at the um, IGA in, in Berlin. Uh, two years later to um, showcase um, the structure again. So for me, it stands for reversibility, for um, yeah, um, a, a concept that you can dismantle and um, assembly in a, in a very um, easy way again. The other project is um, differently. It's, um, it comes more from a traditional way of working with bamboo, how we established it in, in other regions um, of the world. Um, it's the Earth Bamboo School Tipu Sultan uh, Makes. It's located in um, Pakistan. It's a two-story building um, with eight um, classrooms. It's um, uh, located in the region of um, Punjab. Uh, close to um, one of the biggest cities in Pakistan, uh, Lahore. The region is um, characterized by um, a, a very high uh, literature rate, um, also um, uh, through the lack of um, education and also the lack of um, economical possibilities to really um, establish um, uh, a, a work. So the, the aim of this project was really to um, to enable local um, people to train them um, and to enable them to to construct um, uh, an educational building and to to learn about the construction methods and to implement it um, in uh, elsewhere in in the country uh, so far we constructed only the first um, building phase um, that you see here on the right only um, uh, four classrooms unfortunately due to political issues, there's still the hope that we can construct also the second building phase, but we're still waiting for it a um, long time, actually. And um, the, the, the entire building is um, designed um, um, in, a, in a simplicity way. So we, we um, uh, work with the local climate. We're having um, cold winters and um, uh, dry and uh, hot summers. So we are able to um, to work with flat roofs, uh, which is typically also for the region because people tend to sleep on the roofs in, in the summertime, in the hot summertime, um, because they get a breeze. So this is obviously something um, that we um, implemented also with this uh, new school building. We then uh, always work um, uh, with a decent glazing uh, ratio to make sure that we gain the necessary um, solar gains in, in winter time, but uh, we also are careful about overheating in summer. If you construct with bamboo, uh, it's obviously um, uh, prone to overheating. So um, this was something that we reflected in the design with um, uh, shading devices also constructed uh, from bamboo. The ground floor level was um, done in um, as an earthen construction because um, two stories with bamboo, with the load that's coming down is still um, a challenge, at least the, in the construction method um, that we applied. Uh, so we implemented um, a cop construction on ground floor level and um, a bamboo construction at first floor level. 
Um, the local materials available are mainly um, bamboo and earth, but bamboo is mainly used for scaffolding. So our aim was really to, um, to bring in or to showcase that bamboo could also used, um, uh, be used for construction. Uh, normally, a lot of construction is going on with timber, but due to um, deforestation, it's, it's um, a scarce resource. And um, I think it's, it's important to show also different opportunities and uh, to work with different materials. So th this is just um, showing the, um, uh, the foundation construction. We use um, bricks. Here it's already plastered uh, with, a, with a cement uh, plaster, but the entire foundation is constructed from, from bricks. We need, um, obviously, a resistant, water-resistant material there. Um, then uh, the um, uh, wall construction, excellent wall construction is done in, uh, in com, uh, uh, COP construction. What is important to say as well is that what we learn from the region is often that um, the construction techniques, they lack of um, robust details. So foundation is always a problem. They, they suffer from rising damp. That's why um, the local people are also not so much in favor any longer of um, traditional construction techniques. Um, for our understanding, this hasn't to do with that the materials aren't suitable. It has mainly to do with, uh, with really um, minor details, a damp proof course that is often missing and um, shortening the lifespan of the entire building. Um, here we can see then once the um, cop wall um, have reached um, a certain height that we um, start to integrate the connections for the, um, for the upper story. Uh, we construct also the ring beam um, out of um, uh, bamboo canes and um, the lintels for, um, for the doors and the windows. Um, also there we tried really to minimize for the lintels um, uh, the use of timber, um, and then we installed um, basically um, a, a three-layered bamboo uh, ceiling system that we established already with another school project uh, located in in, back, uh, in Bangladesh. And there we the aim was uh, again to to really limit uh, the metal um, that we need for for the connections. So we have uh, metal uh, rods um, that go through the. Um, uh, through the crossing point uh, because we, we're spanning in, in two directions. So the main uh, span, uh, two layers obviously go in the, in the main, main direction of, of the ceiling and um, uh, 90 degrees um, in, in length direction, we have the middle layer and this is fixed uh, with, the, with the metal rod, but then all the, the rest uh, of the connection is done by hand um, with, uh, with help of the ropes. Um, the bamboo facade was also prefabricated as much as possible um, uh, on site, so at ground level, and then we um, tilted um, the entire structure uh, in order to minimize uh, really um, the work that has to be uh, carried out um, at height. Um, here again, we see quite nicely um, the entire setup. So we have um, a plinth um, out of um, and uh, uh, screed here. We have um, bamboo um, um, columns, uh, bamboo beams, and then bamboo columns, uh, sorry, the, the ceiling system, uh, columns again, and um, uh, beams, and uh, the final uh, ceiling. Showing you um, a few pictures also from the inside. The um, upper walls were filled uh, with earth because the winter is quite cold. And um, so you need to, to give um, a, a certain uh, protection in order to, um, to uh, generate a comfortable um, climate. Um, for the veranda, we referred again to, to bamboo splits um, uh, that were installed um, as a uh, as a shield here, and also we used bamboo splits um, for mats that were woven um, on site. Um, they then get uh, another final uh, layer of, um, of a finer uh, mat, um, again, uh, from, from natural uh, resources. Um, and then here we can see that uh, uh, the, the, the walls then have um, to the inside um, have been plastered in order to, to show really um, a nice uh, earthen um, surface and um, the, the ceiling was um, left as, as it was um, constructed. So uh, you, you can really showcase the, the, the beautiful um, handcraft that the craftsmen were carrying out. Also for the windows, for the shutters, we um, 
try to um, work with uh, with bamboo uh, doors and um, windows were still constructed in in timber but this is also maybe an opportunity for future uh, projects to work this out in uh, bamboo this is then um, the final uh, building um, we're still waiting as i said um, for the second construction phase um, to be realized and uh, hopefully um, we can um, install um, this part of the building um, anytime soon. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you got um, a bit of an insight about the projects and I'm looking forward to any questions. Yes, thank you very much for this detailed uh, details about all these projects. I think um, that everyone was really interested in that um, and we are really good in time. So. Um, thank you very much for this. And our next um, presentation will be by uh, Nina Pavliki. And as you're, yeah, as you're already used to, I will shortly introduce her and hope that she is um, already here to join us shortly. Um, Nina Pavliki is an architect and project manager interested in international urbanism and environmental education. Uh, she is currently a doctoral candidate as well as teaching and research associate at the Natural Building Lab of the Technical University Berlin. There she focuses on climate adaptive architecture and constructive design. As one author of the book Moravia Manifesto, Nina Pavliki presents ways to foster innovative and inclusive urban transformation processes together with local communities. Okay, that sounds. <laughs> so I hope <laughs> not promising. Well, um, yeah, I just give me one second because I couldn't unmute. Now you should see my screen, or we we'll see your screen and hear and see you well. All right, go ahead. So I just uh, squeezed these two two images in because they relate quite nicely to um, to Andrea's presentation. If you remember the foundation of uh, the bamboo tower. And also in these times, talking a lot about circular construction, um, you can see what happened actually to the foundation parts. So we, we reused them actually yesterday to build, um, to use it for an installation that we built with students on Anhalter Bahnhof. So um, the lower part um, is still the foundation of the bamboo tower, to, just to kind of close the circle of what happens to the projects. So I got introduced uh, already, Nina Pavlitsky is my name, and um, I am part of the Natural Building Lab team. So um, we are based at the School of Architecture at, uh, the, at TU Berlin, and our topics relate a lot to, well, natural building systems, but also to, a, to building for a post-fossile society, let's say. I think like the bamboo, the, the tower picture that I showed in the beginning tells a lot about our approach. Um, this might also not be um, big news to you that the global challenges that we are currently facing are provoking as well a new way of how we work as architects and how we live and um, how we work together. And we can see or we can feel that currently there's a quite there's a consent to act. So there we all know that we have to do something and have to have to change our habits, have to change the way we've been working, we've been building, and um, and should in this way also not forget. And that is something that is kind of following me through the work that we are doing, especially as well in the uh, in the international context um, that the, the systems we are building in are actually urban spaces are a complete mess in, this, in the way that they are not uh, singularly used, um, that um, urban contexts are never clean and easy to understand, but in this, uh, in this mess, there's also a chance, so we shouldn't be afraid of it, but make the, make the best out of it out of that and use it as a chance to um, to communicate our approaches. So uh, one method we are in this way or one approach we are also in this way or in this sense focusing on is natural building materials. 
that might be for the audience here also not a not a new thing so in the sense the big three uh, wood natural fibers and and earth and but we also see a big challenge um, and of course as as being part of the university for us there's much more possibilities to do so to um, not only embed them in our work but also to communicate about um, the potentials of natural building materials and also to to find solutions that are communicated with um, with a let's say broad a broad range of, uh, of actors, because we also believe that only in this sense, these responses can be um, effectful or can be uh, can be successful as well in a in a way. And therefore, we also are convinced that our like the image and the role of the architect um, has to change. Has to change much more from being the one author architect, the hero architect, into the role of a moderator and someone who can communicate as well the way we are building, for, um, the way we are building, and the choices we are taking. Um, I'll just skip through that. So. Um, uh, I will take the chance now in this uh, with this set of speakers here in, in this webinar and um, with the others much more focusing maybe on the technical properties of, of bamboo as a building material to talk a bit more about what what I like to talk most uh, what I like to most to talk about, which is more focusing on the process and as well bamboo as a um, um, in this sense as a facilitator of um, alternative approaches towards um, architecture. Um, we, and in this way, I will also quite focus on a project that we've done in, in Colombia, in Medellin. So, um, uh, as Dirk Hebel already mentioned, uh, actually the, the areas where bamboo is growing are also the areas where, where we have the highest um, urbanization, urbanization rate globally. And um, in, the con in the Colombian context where, where the, the project I'll show you later on is based, is one of these areas where a lot of bamboo or guagua, how they call it there, is, is growing and has been used traditionally in, or in very simple structures. You can find it everywhere in the rural, in the rural countryside. You can find it in, this, in these kind of like smaller huts. You can find it in um, also two, three-story building, buildings, housing, um, with a lot of detailing and uh, well you can also feel that there's a bit of a percept or that the perception is changing changing you know that on the one hand it's a very economic material so it's it's hard it's easy to get but there's also a lot of challenges um, concerning humidity and so on which makes and well also the, the topic of um, modernity and how people would would imagine which role models they follow in architecture and how this also changes with the, with the time from one material to the two different um, forms of restoring it. So um, as, as we might know there, or as you might know, there's on the one hand, uh, people are very, very super famous architects from Colombia, like Simon Vélez, that are promoting the use of bamboo in this sense of um, very special and highly engineered projects, so very um, with a lot of sense in innovation and, um, uh, and uh, well, experimentation in a way as well. Um, but in the urban context, like the one that I'll be talking about and where I was raising the, where, which I was starting with, uh, we can also find um, an emerging number of young collectives, young architects, uh, for, like, for example, Arquitectura Expandida, 
that are um, that are using this uh, the material as such a material that is um, that is easy to get is well, economic to get um, to produce a different kind of architecture like this one a uh, lot more community spaces and uh, projects as well that are that are focusing a lot on on new production of commun communal spaces this for example is an is an a uh, cinema that is built like right in the middle of an informal neighborhood in Bogota. And um, by being connected to some of these, uh, some of these young collectives quite, quite a lot, um, we also feel that there's an emerging interest and a lot of, um, well, a bit of a spirit that you can feel in the air to also change uh, uh, to create change in the in the built environment and in the use of, of materials. So um, I would like to introduce you now to the to the project I will be showing, which is based in Medellin. Medellin um, being known for um, for its uh, history within the, the high times of es Escobar, with being one of the cities with the highest murder rate actually worldwide and undergoing a high uh, rapid transformation. The neighborhood we are working in is formerly, uh, was formerly this, this waste dump that got inhabited by people and which nowadays looks, uh, looks like that. It's called Moravia. This is the former waste dump, the, the garbage hill that you can see here on the right. And as you can also see, there is a, there's a neighborhood that, that spread around the, um, uh, the hill that is not that is uh, that was that emerged illegally, but um, there's some um, well some kind of formalization process. It has there's about forty thousand people living there in this neighborhood. The high, if you calculate the density rate, it's even higher than Manhattan. It's quite close to the city center, so there's also why there's a whole there's a huge interest in. Um, in the transformation of this neighborhood and with plans by the city to introduce, um, to, to demolish the neighborhood and to create towers like that. But there's also a lot of um, neighborhood initiatives that, wa that want to kind of stay in the area and um, struggle for, for this area. And this is also where our bamboo project and the method of co-production that we are introducing, so, um, or that we are working in as a Colombian German collective um, is uh, is kind of based. So um, the idea for the Taller Tropical, that's the bamboo project, actually arose from a workshop that we did with um, students, Colombian and German students, and German students or international students here in Berlin, where we also. Uh, brought community leaders from Moravia to Berlin, and uh, they actually got quite inspired by community gardens that we had here. And from that, it's a long story. I'll just tell, tell it short. Um, the idea arose to create a, um, a, a small center for um, uh, for environmental mental education, also for nutrition education, and that is an open space in the neighborhood. Um, it is built on a like just on a slab of a of a one-story building that a Colombian foundation rented. So here on the right side, you can also see the uh, finished production. Um, we were working there with together with a oxymoron, a collective of recently graduates that were architecture graduates that are also much more interested in building with bamboo and natural materials than the glass and steel towers that they normally would deal with in the schools of architecture there. And um, with them actually building this construction. So I'll show you a bit of the, of the building process. So a 
important point was, um, of course, the visibility and um, the, the communication about uh, bamboo as a building material. So you're actually cleaning and preparing the bamboo right there in the neighborhood on the streets. There was a lot of involvement of all different actors from, from the neighborhood as well, of course, a bit of steelwork, um, local artists that were working in the taller. Meanwhile, the construction was going on. Um, of course, a lot of challenges to build in the existing in such a very um, uh, well in a, such a very dense neighborhood. And actually, a construction time of uh, four weeks. Um, yeah, so quite a quick action. That was the inauguration. Um, that's how the place looked afterwards. So completely open. It's operated by a a loose transformation of a loose formation of of neighbors. Um, some of the details. There was a, a garden installed with a compass toilet or dry toilet just on the other side of the street. Here are also some paintings by local artists. Um, they're also teaching there in the school. And um, this is what's then actually happening and how it got inhabited. Um, just from the inauguration, um, the schools there have hardly any any space, so they use it as a as an extension, let's say, for the space. And um, dancing classes and so on. Um, we can see, or where I would like to strengthen here is that the the building itself is not very uh, experimental in a sense, in, in its structure. You can see it's very it's very simple. It was also um, built quite quite quick. Um, but what is experimental is actually the form of, of operating it and how a place like that could really function in a, in, a, in this kind of um, neighborhoods and how it could as well attract more people from the city and not only from the neighborhood to get into interaction and to talk with the um, Moravitas there as well about their challenges, about the, the transformation of the neighborhood and so on. And um, well, now that the taller was up for two and a half years, and then the, um, the rental contract for the, for the slab ran out, and actually what happened there, that's usually what you don't really see that much in, in presentations is um, that we, that it got deconstructed just recently now in March. And so that was always our aim as well, that at the building itself as a, or the structure itself could, ex could exist as an experiment and see how it functions and could then as well be transformed or could be as well, re as well relocated. And that um, actually the deconstruction or dismantling process worked out quite nicely. So, um, well, uh, yeah, probably we, sh we should reflect. Yeah, so what we reflected, of course, on was the choice of the of the roof material. You can see here, probably burned. Um, so it got dismantled. Um, afterwards, looking like that, like nothing would have happened. And um, actually the bamboo got stored now and um, the foundation that had rented the, had rented the, the slab, the, uh, the one where the taller was on before, uh, had just, has just, or is it just about to buy this, this lot here where a new kind of um, taller should should be built or will be hopefully be built next year um, because, and uh, because of the uh, well high usage rate and all the interest that the, that the structure and the place itself provoked. And um, that's also where, where I would 
would like to end because, uh, well, for me, that is one of the other potentials in, in bamboo, let's say, uh, apart from you know, the material properties, that is also something that in context like this, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's carrying a sense of building tradition that is very traditional for the, for the region. And that makes also, that makes um, communication about uh, built environment very, very open and very easily accessible. And hopefully, um, can also carry us to new to new challenges like a four story building here. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for these insights and for the nice uh, videos and footage. Um, thank you. And now we have our last contributor today, our last uh, speaker. Um, afterwards, we will have uh, a lot of time to ask questions and for the speakers to comment again on, um, on their presentations and all the questions that are raised. Um, now we have, as I said, the last speaker, it's Stefano Martinelli. Um, he was already mentioned um, before uh, from Bambuzeto. He's the founder and managing director of Bambuzeto and um, president, president of Made in Bamboo, which is a network of Italian companies that produce and work with bamboo. Um, with Bambuzeto, Stefano Martinelli manages a bamboo grove and produces his own material. He also designs and creates structures, furniture, and artistic installations from bamboo. And as a lecturer, he often combines theoretical knowledge with practical experiences in confer conferences, workshops, and construction projects. So, uh, Stefano Martinelli, are you here with us? Yeah, I'm with you. Nice. And thanks, <laughs> thanks for the good uh, introduction and uh, thanks for inviting me. So I I share my my screen to to share my presentation. Uh, moment. So. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, so I am um, the um, I own a company called Bambuzeto that I found in uh, late 2010, and um, it takes its name from the forest where I grow up and uh, harvest the material with uh, I use to realize my structures. Um, so uh, I'm not alone. I conduct Bambuzeto with architect Tara Violante, and uh, now she is working because we, we work together and we work uh, in the forest, but also in the laboratory, and uh, we together are a good team. I'm also the president of a business network, network um, called um, Made in Bamboo, that um, is a network of Italian bamboo company, um, and it's born to support the promotion of Italian bamboo. So uh, that's our team. And uh, uh, now in this slide, you can see um, the bamboo in Italy because uh, you have to know that in the last five years, many agricultural uh, farmers planted hectares of bamboo. And these hectares are growing uh, really, really good. And uh, you can see on your left um, um, five years of bamboo group that I visited just last, uh, last week. And it's, um, it's a forest of Phytostachys edulis. That is a bamboo that grows really fast. And uh, it can um, reach a diameter of 515 centimeter and 20 meter high. And another bamboo forest is um, the one um, that you see in the middle of Phytostachys iridescens. And on the right, you can see our bamboo grove of Phytostachys iridescens. 
So uh, advantages of Istanbul are different and uh, really interesting because we have economic advantages. Uh, you don't have to replant bamboo groove when you harvest uh, the calm, and uh, you can pick up case every year without negatively impact impacting on the groove. So uh, every year we have case to, to pick up. <laughs> it's really interesting because uh, bamboo is a fast growing plant. And uh, environmental um, uh, advantages are uh, a lot, but I tell you just a couple. Um, I tell you that it prevents uh, soil from erosion and um, it produces more oxygen than trees, trees and can fix CO2 into the soil. So it's uh, really interesting as a plant and the plantation of bamboo is really, really good for uh, environment. Uh, it also has social benefits uh, because it brings uh, local uh, benefits for farmers and um, it has also commercial uh, implication because we, we don't have the need anymore to import materials from other continents. So it's really, really good for uh, environment. And uh, about industrial, we can say that uh, also in Europe, uh, there are, uh, they are developing a new industrial application about semi-finished semi products like laminated beams or bamboo panels or plywood. And um, it's really good to use bamboo as building material because uh, uh, you don't have to, um, uh, to manufacture bamboo uh, before, uh, before use it. So you can take the cane in the forest and uh, use it uh, uh, as it is. It's really, really interesting because bamboo is ready to use. Um, and uh, we have already said that it's similar to steel rods and lightweight and strong with a lot of property. And it's called also the green um, steel uh, because it's lighter than uh, steel and it's five times stronger than concrete and more resistant than wood. Um, it's also one of the green building materials because of its, its fast growing, it's because it's durable and strong, because it's a positive environmental effect. And um, it will be available in our countries in the next years. So it's a good opportunity for, uh, for us. Um, also, you, we can realize laminated beams or bamboo plywood or panels. So it's really interesting because you don't need to use only the raw material, but we can realize, realize with it um, uh, beams and uh, other panels. Uh, um, the bamboo um, gives us a good production of canes every, every year. So we don't need uh, to replant bamboo. And it has a short growing cycle. You can see uh, the difference between bamboo growing cycle and the one of other, of other plants. That's a photo of, of our bamboo grooves. And um, uh, you see the color, the ribbon around the cane that identify the age of the cane. Because you have to know that the canes grow up just with the diameter, diameter that will uh, keep all over the, their entire life. And so, um, and so we have to use this uh, kind of strategy to recognize the old canes that we cut. Because if we cut the old cane, we don't, um, we, we, don't uh, we maintain the forest uh, really good. So we, uh, it's an interesting uh, material also for this way. Uh, our business um, network uh, um, had collaboration with university. Uh, for example, uh, engineer Luisa Molari from Bologna tested our bamboo, uh, our, our material, and also Mozo, um, because uh, she is trying to approve uh, our bamboo as building materials for Italian construction code. 
um, at the moment bamboo is not a construct it's not considered a construction material for the uh, because it's not uh, inserted into the ISO rules and also in this uh, way there is um, a team of engineers and architects that is leading studies to um, to try to insert bamboo into these the ISO rules. We hope in the next year uh, it will be um, it will be possible. Uh, <clears throat> the last uh, is that um, engineer Francesca Parotti of Isia in Florence is studying a new method to join fiber uh, of laminated bamboos, lam laminated beam, bamboo beams uh, with the sustainable, sustainable method. And so it's interesting because uh, glue uh, are not uh, involved in this kind of study. We will discover it in the next years. So um, what we do, um, we harvest the bamboo in our, uh, in our um, forest and then, we, and then we build the structure with, uh, with our bamboo. Uh, so on, we share our products in three different ways because of the big. Uh, so on the left, we see the temporary installations and structures that what we can do in Italy uh, or interior fitting solution that are smaller and uh, you can put it inside the uh, uh, inside a um, uh, garden or a um, commercial uh, uh, and we do also product design So uh, we um, make all the cycles from um, from the um, from picking up the case into the forest to realizations and of the object of structure that people usually ask us. So uh, we have people who come to us and um, say uh, they need uh, to build a bamboo structure or um, objects and they don't know how to do. So uh, we try to realize it with our Italian bamboo. Usually they are uh, really happy with it. We do different things and uh, we uh, uh, answer different requests. Also the prototypes are really interesting, is a really interesting sector because we project and study uh, prototypes for our clients. And uh, we, um, we held courses and workshop in our country to promote the potentiality of bamboo uh, for construction purpose. We are also part and partner of partner of many bamboo business, business networks that count um, 16 companies at the moment and produce not only material funds for construction, but also bamboo products like uh, tea infusions and flour made with leaves and bamboo shoots for cooking. So our bamboo grove is uh, around one hectare uh, big and it's of one uh, species called Philostachys viridi glaucheschel. Our canes are uh, up to 40 meter height and the diameter is around 5.5 meter the average diameter. But inside the forest, we have caves that can uh, be uh, three centimeter or uh, uh, the biggest one I saw is eight centimeter. The diameter depends on, on the species. So Mozo will, is, a bigger, is a different species and can reach bigger dimensions. But it's interesting that our bamboo is really striped and homogeneous. Uh, so, uh, as you see in the tower of, um, um, of uh, Andrea, uh, the calm was uh, really, really striped, and it's not so common for, uh, for bamboo because uh, you have to know that the uh, bamboo for construction are not so much, uh, just uh, 12 or 
20 species around the world. But in the one who lives in our temperature, temperate uh, climate zone are uh, really few. We also make treatment against woodworm and we use boron salt. We make it into the, directly into the forest um, and the method is called of transpiration of leaves. We just cut the canes green and put the base of the cane um, still with leaves and branches into a um, can, a big can. Uh, with a solution of borax salt and uh, water. And the canes uh, bring up the solution uh, inside, the, inside, the, inside the cane and uh, for, uh, we, we leave it there for two weeks and then the cane um, is uh, treated. That's a view of our bamboo from down to up. And now I would like to speak to you about a couple of structures. One is the bamboo flower that is that we realized last year in Fortanellato at Labyrinth della Masone, uh, that is a um, real labyrinth of bamboo. And uh, in this place, uh, this place is devoted to disseminate knowledge and tactics about bamboo. And uh, the structure was project, projected and conceived by architect Mauricio Cardenas La Verde, but the material and the manufacturing is made by us. So what we would like to uh, demonstrate is that we can realize with Italian bamboo uh, all the structure from the material to um, the um, project and the realization. So um, this kind of uh, structure was considered as a main installation of under the bamboo tree event. That's an interesting event about bamboo that uh, takes place in October uh, all the years in this uh, place, the Labyrinth of the Amazone. This structure is uh, made of prefabricated pre modules. There are 16 arches that are benched, um, quenched, quenched and tempered with cold water to keep the cured. So it's really interesting because we had to uh, find this way of uh, bending bamboo and it was the first time for us and we had to discover it uh, uh, by trying on the cane. So it uh, they took us a really really much time. And uh, between the arches, there are modules that we call pitos, and they are also made of canes, and the pitos fulfill the space between the 16 arches. The structure is seven meter uh, large, and uh, it has Three point meter of height. We build the structure in our laboratory, then we uh, disassemble it and we build it again into the Labyrinth de Amazone. That's the idea and the concept of Mauricio Cardena that after a while uh, came to our laboratory to develop the project and find working solution because it's not so easy to conceive a um, project on uh, bamboo and it's uh, how we work. Uh, we usually speak with architects and people and we ask them to come with us and find together the solution to the problem that uh, presents us. So you see the structure on the left uh, uh, finished and there are two arches, one in the middle and one on the top. Uh, the structure is assembled in, in the left side, side, and we assembled it in just one day. This uh, product is uh, called Kubu, and it's an interesting product because uh, it's uh, entirely designed by us and manufactured um, 
and uh, it won the first prize at the international cost test of bamboo rush. It's completely realized with bamboo split that was turned, turned and curved with it and uh, quenched and tempered with cold water to keep this kind of uh, uh, form. This product it was, is, uh, is a fit and can sustain a people, for example, or even a table. And uh, it's really interesting because uh, it's strong and uh, that it's strong because the strips are twisted on two sides of the square. And uh, that's why uh, we, we, we can realize a structure that can, that can sustain even 100 kilos. The structure is multifunctional, it's uh, lightweight, and um, it's, it's made of uh, these modules that we can reproduce easily, and it's connected with, uh, with wooden pins. So we don't have used any metal, uh, any metal material, and uh, uh, we realize this uh, cube with just one cool one card. This structure is interesting because it takes advantages advantage of the resistance and plasticity of bamboo. It's like a demonstration that with the bamboo strips we can do really a lot. So you can see uh, the split of uh, bamboo, the construction, and the design project. So that's our cube into the bamboo zeto. And now I say you thank you and if you have any questions or for further information just write me and i and i can uh, answer you yes thank you very much um, for this um also to have it's good to have all these different perspectives and we are able to address all of these in our discussion and I'm happy to say that we can close today earlier as we've planned. So we'll probably be through at 12.30. So please stay with us for the discussion. And also we have at the end, at the very end, a short question where we would like to have your ideas on how we could use bamboo in the future, what use cases you have in mind where we could address and applicate it. So I see some of you already switched uh, the videos on. Thank you for that. So all the speakers are invited to do so. And um, yeah, uh, also if you have a question that you want to um, ask directly to our speakers, you can raise your hand as I've shown at the beginning and also switch your audio and video on and then you can ask it directly. You can also use the chat as you've already done very actively. So thank you also for this. And at that point, I would also like to um, welcome again our, um, uh, our cooperation partners from Architect, Architects for Future. And I would invite you to say hello so people see you as well and that they can, that they know that they can also address questions, of course, to you. So are you there? Um, yep, I'm there, but um, for some reason I'm unable to switch on my camera, so. It's, it's not good, but I'm there. <laughs> thank you. We can hear you well, so that should suffice, I think. Um, thank you very much. Okay, and I would I like... Think, sorry, I think this was uh, Judith Ottich speaking, right? Because there yes. are more of you here, as far as I know. Okay, Judith, nice that you're here. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I would like to start off with our first speaker. Um, Dick Hebel, he already answered loads of questions in the chat. Um, nonetheless, I would say that you're welcome to comment on those. Um, one of the topics that I picked out of the chat was um, the question of um, flexibility. So, Judith Ottich, we've already seen you as well. You uh, asked um, that you said from experience, you know, that um, the flexibility is an issue with bamboo. 
um, leading to cracks or bigger thicknesses of layers. And you said that um, more research would be interesting here and asked whether someone is looking into that matter. Could you comment on that, Mr. Hebel? Yeah, um, I, uh, I think I, I tried to answer that in that way that, that bamboo is a natural material, as we know, for example, from timber or from any other grasses and stuff like that. So we have to acknowledge that um, certain things are possible and certain things are not possible. <laughs> that means cracking, for example, in, in a stem, it's a natural process uh, when you lose water and, and uh, you dry out. The question is, how do we deal with this, right? It's the same question with the timber. And uh, in the recent decades, we answered that with more and more chemistry. So making sure that uh, we put even more chemistry on our natural building materials to protect them from, from any um, climatic influences. And of course, as I wrote also in the chat before, that is preventing then these materials entering a biological circle again. So we have to make very, very sure that, um, that we come up with concepts and with uh, ideas um, based on a circular economy that we make sure that these products are um, not prohibited uh, to enter any circle again, meaning that whatever we do uh, in terms of these natural building materials, um, we have to first understand um, how we protect them in terms of, of the structure, in terms of the design uh, of, of building materials. And afterwards, only if, if there are no other means, making sure that we maybe add any uh, other components to it uh, that protect them for a longer time, but at the same time, and not prohibit uh, for any other uh, biological circle uh, to follow after the first one. Yes, thank you. You uh, said or you mentioned the circular um, uh, topic or make, making it circular uh, bamboo. And in this connection, there was also the question whether there are um, bio-based glues that you could use uh, instead of other glues that may pre prevent the material from being circular. Yeah, that is a that is a, um, a very interesting and hot research topic right now. Also, in uh, many industries um, that we are searching for such uh, components or adhesive systems, which do not um, kind of prevent that circular mentality of these building materials. We are almost there. So also in our research, I could maybe say that we are 95% we are biological, but uh, as usual, the last 5% are the, the hard uh, nut to, to crack. Um, and it, it needs a couple of more, I, I guess, it needs a couple of more years to have finally systems and adhesive systems, and not talking only about bamboo, but the same for the timber industry or for other natural materials. When you think of OSB or of, of, of any other board systems that we're using, uh, right now in the, in the timber industry um, and these glues that we're using right now mostly PU are actually a problem uh, and, and usually they prevent um, these materials to come in the full circle again and then we talk about cascading systems in the end we, we talk about that nice uh, term uh, a thermal uh, recycling which is in the end um, uh, burning our, our very uh, important resources which we should stop doing uh, immediately also in terms of emissions um, that are coming out with this. So we need to come up with new products for a circular uh, industry in, in Europe or in, in the global uh, realm and that, that are uh, respecting uh, these biological uh, materials and respecting the idea of leaving them in the biological um, uh, circle, talking about cradle to cradle and not mixing them uh, with the technical uh, circle and preventing therefore the idea of endless metabolism. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a new qu uh, question in the chat. Um, sorry, I was hearing myself uh, <laughs> speaking. Um, that I want to address to all of the speakers, namely, how difficult is it to produce glue laminated bamboo? I don't know who of you might be the right person to address here. Maybe if some of you had experience with that, you can share your, your knowledge about this. I could maybe also <laughs> give an insight on that one. I mean, to produce a, a glam bamboo is not very difficult, right? And we saw already images um, of signs of that that showed, for example, that the, the way how in Southeast Asia that is done um, is by heating up the, the bamboo fiber um, um, in, in almost like a hot pot, 
right? So you, you have high temperatures between 70 and 90 degrees Celsius. Um, therefore, you take the sugars out of the bamboo, and then the, the bamboo is unattractive, as I mentioned before, for any microbes or for any other insects. And, and then uh, a lot of glue is tend to have mixed and pressed into these, um, these um, bamboo um, um, composite materials. Um, by doing so, by, by cooking it, um, you're destroying a lot of, of the technical means uh, that makes that material so unique. So you can imagine if you have long um, uh, fibers in, in that bamboo, as I mentioned before, how important they are for the tensile capacity. And if, if you cook them or heat them up, uh, the cells will explode in the heat. And therefore, it's losing its capacity of a, of a high tensile strong material. So these, these laminated bamboos, as you can, they're very good in, in compression strength, um, but they're, they're losing a little bit in terms of, of uh, air bending capacity. Therefore, we in, in Singapore do a lot of research how we can um, put them into a laminate state without cooking the fiber, so without heating up, and therefore the cell should be, should be intact. You saw the microscopic image I showed, that was actually a check if the cells are still intact or if the cells exploded um, during, the, uh, during the, the process of putting them together in the laminated process. So, so there is a, a, a large industry already in places of East Asia, also in Central America, which already uh, is existing. Also the question, how can we keep as well? So I was a bit shaky on the, on the audio. I have the speaker, um, Markus Heinsdorf, you gave quite a little speech in the chat. Um, I would invite you to comment um, in, on the audio file um, as well on how um, how your projects are received. Um, are they received as, uh, yeah, serious construction projects um, with people wanting to imitate it or rather like extra eccentric eccentricities, sorry. Um, I mean, this is, um, um, yeah, kind of a, a mean question maybe, but uh, so how, how would you say, how is the reception of these projects and how also another question that was asked, how can we bring bamboo more to the masses and more, um, yeah, to be used more also um, in, in the um, global south, but also in our region? What can we do to, to raise awareness and to get people on board? Would you like to comment on that? Yeah, um, um, we couldn't hear the, the, the answer from their cable about the laminated bamboo. Maybe when he write a little bit for this, for me, it was also very interesting, or only a little, uh, little answer also to this uh, theme. So for me, this is the, one of my main works with the idea, uh, maybe I hear a little bit, uh, he, he, he mentioned that uh, I, with enormous pressure, we can uh, press bamboo to without any glue in a natural way. And uh, I think also the, the glues uh, today, the, this organic glues, there's a lot, a lot of possibilities for interior and exterior using of the bamboo. So for me, the, the laminated bamboo is a little bit the, the way for for the future uh, um, than the natural way um, with the early times to floating the bamboo for many weeks in, in sea water and so on uh, or in rivers it's it's maybe use a lot of time and is not future based for my idea so this is the using of less chemical I think this is one of the important things and I think the laminated bamboo have the basic for this. Uh, to your question about uh, how bamboo can be, uh, if I understand it right, how bamboo can be used also in Europe or it can be uh, used more in the future. Um, in, in the moment, we work with a, a, a small team uh, uh, on the idea of a um, low, extremely low cost model. And all my experience go, going in this way if I work in poor countries, uh, mostly the people uh, are not so amused and not accepted, accepted so much the, the, the traditional design. And one of my concepts is how we can be learn from the tradition and can use it and 
transform it a little bit with design, with technique. Uh, this is also why I'm, I like to, to combine a little bit the steel uh, and uh, the bamboo or uh, whatever artificial, other artificial materials. In the history, if you look to the traditional materials, mostly a lot of steel is in the bamboo, in, in the roofs construction. So my idea is uh, let's do it, uh, visit, make it visible and use it as a kind of uh, a jewelry of the technology. So. This is why I'm searching about how we can we use the material in a more um, yeah, uh, future um, way to make the people proud about his uh, simple, uh, to live in simple construction. I think this is a basic problem everywhere in the world, also in poor countries, that uh, nobody won't live in a simple bamboo construction and everybody won't uh, look to the Western. Uh, but uh, you know, in the future, the best architects will go to the slums and design the cities. This is a, a, a um, speech from the um, um, Climate Institute here in, 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 uh, in Potsdam in Germany from uh, Joachim Schell, who were here now it, the, the, the design of the future will be also maybe or the construction made by waste. And I'm still work on this uh, issue and I'm saying there is a lot of possibi possibilities to, you, to combine um, concept designs with uh, traditional and uh, um, modern technologies, uh, in, also today with 3D, uh, the modeling with 3D printing and so on. There's a lot, a lot of uh, um, yeah, possibilities to think about design, think about technique in a new way, but don't forget the traditional. And what we see a lot of interesting construction, modern construction, uh, uh, especially also this idea of, of towers uh, um, with uh, bending uh, bamboo columns. Um, but I think the, 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 the truth will be in the combination, the, the need will be in the extremely low cost designs and uh, the need will be to go to countries and uh, bring our knowledge there, but help them to make their own startups, not that we go to uh, um, poor countries and uh, try to make a design models that this never will be really copied and the money is not there. Go there and help to build startup, help to bring the knowledge, work together. And I think there it will be a huge future for us to um, make cooperation, especially also in Africa uh, and, and South America. And this is what I, I'm, I'm very interested in. What is our next plan? Uh, low cost building with a heavy, new, lovely design and cooperation and helping for startups. Yes, thank you. And I think that uh, Nina Pavliki can maybe uh, comment on that as well, because you mentioned also the importance of the local community and to have them on board to show them what's possible with, uh, with the building material and also how attractive it can be. And so I want to address another question that was coming in now in the chat uh, to Nina Pavliki, um, which is um, how do you follow up on the collaboration and how do you make it sustainable um, this uh, this collaboration um, with people with local people, can you maybe answer that, uh, Nina Pavliki? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, uh, the, these kind of projects, of course, they they often come with this conception that, and that happens a lot. Unfortunately, that groups of students go there and then they leave, and the projects are there for themselves, and there's. I guess what you're addressing with sustainability is as well a kind of long-term engagement. Um, so, and uh, with the time, you also learn to be very, very critical and sensible with that. So, um, here in that case, in the ca this case, um, we or myself, I'm involved in the project uh, since 2017, 16, 17. And uh, but my the other two my the part the German other part of the German team already for eight years. So I mean it is a long term engagement, and the bamboo project is just a small small piece from from a bigger vision with a lot of um, Colombian um, input as well. And the ownership is completely on the Colombian side, 
And from our perspective, and maybe I didn't really mention that enough to uh, in the presentation, of course, the, we come from architectural education. And in the last uh, two years, or until Corona hit, uh, we were doing summer schools there in Colombia with Col only Colombian students as well um, in the Taller Tropical and also they were involved in the building and um, for us, you know, um, at, at this point where there is a lot of interest but the, the architectural education system is much more traditionalized and uh, a lot of um, uh, well, glass and steel architecture projects that they would normally undergo at school, but we feel that there's also more interest from the student side and also from a few teachers that is growing in these different form of architectural production and of course of the choice of material and um, working with these young upcoming next generation of architects that is actually what I feel is uh, one of the the most sustainable things we can do there in this point <laughs> at this point um, apart from of course the the po the the points that relate very much to this specific case in Moravia working with the community and, and the sustainability I mean it's a bit um, yeah I can I can see where I would have I wouldn't have thought that this project would uh, would accompany me for Four years and there's no no really point in ending it or no interest in ending it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's another question that's a bit in the same direction, which is that bamboo is quite unknown, um, an unknown building material in Europe still, and um, that also limits its application. Um, Martin van der Funding over. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. Um, asked this question and asked um, whether or how you can involve relevant professional education organizations, um, yeah, to achieve that the the chain from the harvesting and um, processing um, also to the construction side is addressed. Um, and I would like to post that question to Andrea Klinger because she also said that um, that is something that they want to go into more in the future to show the life cycle analysis and also the environmental benefits of bamboo in construction. So maybe do you have ideas, Andrea Klinger, um, and how we yeah, get this building material more to the masses, more to the attention of people? Um, that's a very good good point. Um, I think we need to, in, generally, uh, in, in general, it's also in Europe, we need to be much more transparent about the environmental impact of, um, of construction materials. And I think it's also clear in Germany and, and Europe, the rest of Europe, that we have to make a change. And I think this is something we try to establish also in, in other regions. I mentioned this in the chat. Um, we are involved in um, projects in Bangladesh since 2004, 2005. And um, there's always um, then maybe a pause, but um, we re-establish new projects and the community over there is, they are very open to um, sustainable construction, construction with uh, bamboo and earth, uh, but they also see that um, other uh, villages maybe have a different understanding and everybody dreams about um, uh, brick construction in, um, uh, in a durable way. And um, we, um, we had a, um, a, a master thesis um, where I was involved um, that was exactly looking into this um, topic and um, uh, the, the student did uh, an LCA analysis. And I think this is something that is important for the people also to understand that we have to understand the environmental impact and we have to make this transparent also to, to the users. And then, then I think it's a question of um, um, really encouraging uh, people over there to, to go down that route, although it's, it's maybe a bit more difficult. Um, and I think if, if we as a precedent in Europe, we, we also change our behavior and, and uh, avoid glass steel constructions that we can't afford any longer for various different reasons. I think it's a, it's a communal approach to, to resolve this issue and to, to promote um, the, the right um, uh, future oriented materials uh, worldwide. Yes, thank you for this. <laughs> 
And um, to look more on the, the practical side of the matter, also of building with bamboo in Europe, I would like to um, ask a question um, or address a question of the of the audience to Stefano Martinelli, um, which is um, how far north bamboo groves are actually possible and how you choose the right bamboo species to plant and how difficult it is to yeah to starting to plant non native um, plants here in Europe. So um, Mr. Martinelli, maybe you can give us an insight here. Yeah, I can give you uh, just an insight because uh, we have different bamboos, just a lot of them, and uh, they can grow up to really, really in the Agar Mountains. There is bamboo that lives in Himalaya, so you know, this bamboo can resist also to very, very strong temperatures. But we are speaking about building bamboos, and I know that mozo can resist up to uh, less 20 degrees and 20 degrees under zero. So it's uh, really, really strong. Obviously, uh, just for a little period, but uh, okay, so we can uh, grow up a bamboo uh, even in the north of uh, Europe. Uh, the problem can be the, the snow because with the snow, uh, bamboo can crack. And so you can't use bamboo anymore. How we choose the bamboo for our for our purpose? Uh, even this kind of choose depends on um, different um, different of some of some on economics, for example. Um, if you choose a species like mozo, these grew up really fast, and you have a bamboo groove in less than ten years. If you choose another species, just like bambusoides, you need 15 years to grow up a bamboo and have uh, 15 or 10 centimeter canes that you can sell to other people. So it's, uh, it depends on most on economics at the, moment, at the moment, because they are growing bamboo all over uh, Italy for sure. And, Probably next year it will be grow up also in Europe. In Europe, even in the south of um, Italy, they are growing up uh, subtropical bamboo. So we are growing uh, different species, all good for uh, building purposes. So in the next five, ten years, we'll have a lot of bamboo, and we can develop industrial applications. That's a good point, actually, and I want to ask you a further question on this, uh, namely what the cost of bamboo is actually in um, Europe right now, and also because that's involved, like that belongs to the same question, how long a bamboo building can stand, because that's also uh, relevant for the costs, if you take them in perspective. Can you comment on that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can give you um, just a, a little answer, and um, the bamboo uh, the cost depends on the diameter of the cane and on the length and of the how much bamboo do you do you need. Uh, uh, I sell bamboo canes at three euro euros for a um, meter per, per meter. I speak to you uh, about bamboo canes with a diameter of five and six, uh, between five and six centimeter. So probably bigger canes cost one euro, two euro, five euro more. It depends on uh, on the diameter. And um, about the other question, um, I can say that uh, mm, yeah, mm, I <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can you repeat me the question now? <laughs> yeah, I just was. Asking uh, how long a building out of bamboo how long? Okay, like, stands yeah. on average. How long is the? I, I can tell you that I have a gazebo outside uh, under all the um, uh, the heavy rain and wind and wind and uh, it's five years that it's standing up without any kind of treatment, so it can stand outside. Uh, 
uh, five years or more, but inside it can last a lot. It depends on treatments that you make outside, just like with, just like wood. It's a structure, natural structure, and you have to maintain the structure from outside with the uh, paint, uh, painting it with the, um, uh, some with something that keeps the structure protected by external agents. Okay, thank you very much. So we've taken quite some time for the discussion now. Um, I would invite um, Judith Ottich if you would like to um, give us a conclusive statement on um, bamboo and how you see it in, uh, yeah, in terms of environmental um, properties and in general, how you see the potential of bamboo in the future. Yeah, I found uh, this seminar of uh, your series very inspiring indeed. Um, We've heard quite a lot. We've heard from Dirk Heber that the potential of bamboo in the face of the climate crisis and the resource crisis is quite huge. Um, we saw pavilions and exhibitions of Marcus Heinsdorf and the combination of steel and bamboo. So a development um, of the material and also of the construction methods. We saw um, that Andrea Klinge is working on um, construction with earth and bamboo, the combination with very interesting details. We saw um, Nina Pavlitsky's um, approach of solutions that they depend on the integration of actors and um, on relationships really, and um, on discussion and debate, and also on the role of the architect. That I think is, is a crucial point that we, we as a whole need to think about the role of the architect. Um, and um, we also heard of Stefano Martinelli, so um, Bamuzeto, very inspiring indeed. So my, my question in the end is, how do we spread the excitement? How do we spread the knowledge? And how do we implement the widespread application of bamboo? And um, yeah, the crucial point is, why aren't we building with bamboo on a larger scale already? So what needs to happen to do so in the near future and what are the biggest challenges? I think it's, we defined that education plays a big role and that the building code and the ISO norms may be a challenge as well. But also where I see the biggest potential is in the global south and um, maybe another challenge is the image of bamboo construction and traditional materials in the global south. So. On a global perspective, Europe is not the place with the most potential because Europe's mostly built and doesn't have the climatic conditions yet, fortunately. Maybe in southern Italy, maybe in Italy, you can grow bamboo, but not to the height um, that it reaches in other regions of the world. So yeah, it was very inspiring indeed. <laughs> thank you all very much and um, yeah. Thank you for um, having the opportunity of being part of this um, web seminar series. Yeah, thank you very much. And I would give the question to our audience. I will share my screen with you. And I would like to invite you um, to do one last uh, poll with us. And there you, you are welcome to add your ideas of um, use cases where Babu could be used more in the future. And um, yeah, and also maybe how we can um, bring it to the attention of more people um, so that bamboo can be used more than it is um, already done. There should also be a link in the chat. Yeah, it's there. So you're welcome to join. And I will shortly switch to the other screen so that I can share the uh share it with you so there's already something coming in you can just simply uh, uh, give your ideas and we will see them shortly so now we should be able to see it furniture is something that we haven't talked a lot about today um but it was also mentioned that we could could be used for this as well. Um, what other ideas do you have? Where could we use it more? Um, also in terms of building construction, 
what kind of constructions can you imagine where we can use it? Um, and also how can we, um, yeah, bring it to the attention of more people um, inside the buildings, yes, and in facades, public places also. Yes, in the maybe also more in the global south where there's where it's naturally growing that we could use it more. In exchange of timber also. I'm scrolling down. Flooring beams at commons facade cladding. Standardized construction parts, I think this is. Again, in the global south, right? In combination with uh, with wood constructions inside, where it's lasting longer, as we've as we've heard, floorings, household items as well. I think some of us have, have encountered um, bamboo here as well for toothbrushes, for example. <laughs> yes, so there are a lot of ideas I think where we could use bamboo more, and maybe the seminar could also spark some more ideas and inspire you to. Uh, to bring it to your respective, um, uh, yeah, uh, applications. So um, thank you very much um, for for um, contributing here. I will stop sharing now and go into our presentation for some uh, summarizing words. Again. I'm sorry, I, oops. So, Tillman, I would yeah. <laughs> invite you to take over. Thank you, there we are. And um, yes, you did, I just can agree. It was really an, an very enlightening, inspiring lecture today. And first of all, what I really learned is bamboo is grass and not as a tree. That's very good also for the growth potential. And we really saw a lot of potentials within this building material and that it's really a promising, um, let's say addition to the uh, broad range of sustainable building materials that, are, that we are already very familiar with, such as timber and bricks and clay and hemp and so on. And uh, yeah, really a good addition also to the, these materials that yeah, Nature Plus already has on, on yeah, on site or we are already aware of and have already certified on and with our eco label. Um, yeah, so to the um, experts here, thank you so much. Really very interesting. We learned a lot. And um, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, I also want to say thank you very much to our sponsors again. Uh, check out the, the forum. Uh, next slide, please, Marlene. And yeah, talking about sustainable building products, we for sure have also talked about secondary materials. Um, that's going to be the next web seminar on eight, uh, 18th of June in German then. And um, yeah, you're very invited to, to uh, join there as well. And also to join our last webinar. Um, there, please be aware it's on uh, Thursday, not on Friday, and it's in the afternoon. And this gives us actually the opportunity to, um, after that, uh, to come together in a, a little bit different um, room, actually, because um, like we, like we have gathered so so many good ideas here and we really want to transform these ideas and the knowledge into action and this going to be also the idea of our last gathering of our last uh, web seminar to to think what can we do together and so we there we have already planned um an interesting format for this uh, coming together so uh, please yeah take a little bit more time for the last date and also then bring a little bit um yeah a drink or something you can be excited for that too. Um, yeah, that's it actually. Thank you so much. We are pretty good in time. So have a very good weekend actually. And uh, see you next time. Yes, thank you again for your active contribution also in the chat and see you next time. Bye bye.
And just a note, as always, we going to leave the room open for a little bit longer so you can uh, copy some uh, questions or answers you found there or other information. Bye-bye.